What we're going to be going over here is direct or what they refer to as variable costing here versus absorption costing. And these are two different inventory valuation methods that we're going to be looking at. And this we would be using these inventory valuation methods when we're doing cost accounting here. So we're going to be comparing both the direct or variable. Those are interchangeable terms. Some people call it direct. Some people call it variable costing here. And we're going to comp compare the direct or variable costing to absorption costing, or could be referred to as full absorption costing, for our inventory valuation methods here. And then we're also going to be looking at uh, our input measurement basis and compare both our direct or our variable costing versus our absorption costing. And when we talk input measurements here, we're talking about uh, looking at actual versus normal versus standard costing. And those would be uh, the costs that flow into and through these inventory accounts here. Okay, so let's go and let's look at our compare both the direct or variable method here to our full absorption method. Okay. So what I've done here, I've got it laid out here. So what we're going to be looking at here is uh, we're going to have to determine what's going to go into our inventory or be capitalized in our inventory here. And then we have to determine what's going to be expensed and when, it, when it's really incurred here, it's going to be expensed. And again, we're going to be looking at our variable here versus our absorption costing. Okay, so what we do here, we're our direct materials, our direct labor, in our factory overhead, the variable factory overhead here, for our variable costing, that would we those three quantities here, with direct materials, direct labor, and variable factory overhead would be uh, going into our inventory here and be capitalized in our inventory under variable costing. Now, with absorption costing, we have to add one more item here for our factory overhead, the fixed overhead. A portion of our factory overhead along with our direct materials, direct labor, and our variable factory overhead. The fixed factory overhead here would be included in our inventory capitalization here using absorption costing. So really that's the only difference between variable and absorption costing is how we ha handle our factory overhead costs here. Okay, so the other, when we look at the expense, what's being expensed here with our variable costing, we would take the factory overhead, the fixed portion, and also our selling and administration expenses, both the variable and a fixed portion here, would be expensed when incurred here for variable costing. Now with absorption costing, we would only be taking the selling and administration, both the variable and fixed cost here would be expensed again when they're incurred. Because the factory overhead, the fixed portion here, would be uh, inventoried or capitalized here under absorption costing. Okay, so that's really the basic difference between variable and absorption costing is how we handle our uh, fixed factory overhead. For variable costing, it gets expensed. For absorption costing, this fixed portion here of factory overhead gets capitalized in the inventory. Okay, so now let's move on here and let's really look at our cost flow for each our absorption costing versus our variable costing. So what I've done here, I've got it laid out here. We're going to start with our factory costs here. They're going to be, and our factory costs are going to be moved into a work in process. Work in process is going to go to finished goods, and then we're going to get to our cost of goods sold here. And we'll make the comparison here for both our absorption and our direct or variable costing. And the other thing we're going to be looking at is those selling and administrative costs here, or those other overhead costs, how they're going to be handled here as period costs. They're not selling an administration. And also, if we go down here and we looked under the variable costing, we're going to not only be having selling and administration costs, but we're going to have those fixed factory overhead costs, along with the selling and administration, are going to go in as period costs here. The point is, with these period costs, they're going to be uh, expensed when they're incurred, and they're not going to be included in the cost of goods sold, or they're not going to be included in your inventory costs. Okay, so that's really the difference that we're going to be looking here on our, uh, uh, our cost flow here. So let's just go up and let's look at our absorption costing here, make the comparison. So with absorption costing, we're going to take all those factory costs for direct material, direct labor, 
and the overhead, both variable and fixed overhead. They're going to be uh, total together here, and that's going to be a total manufacturing costs are going to flow into our work and process. So we'll take our beginning work and process, we add to it those total manufacturing costs, and then uh, to our beginning work and process, and then we would subtract our ending work and process, whatever we have there. And that would give us our cost of goods manufactured. And then our cost of goods manufactured moves into our finished goods where we're going to have our beginning finished goods. Then we add to that our cost of goods manufactured. And then we'd have to subtract from that our ending finished goods, whatever we have in that. In that. And that will give us our cost of goods sold. And our cost of goods sold is going to then be ex expensed. Everything was an asset up to that point. And then the only difference here, if we gone down and I looked at our director variable costing, Again, only our variable uh, over uh, variable overhead here would be included here when we talk about those total manufacturing costs for our, for our variable costing. It's going to be our direct materials, direct labor, and the variable overhead here. With the absorption costing, we included the fixed uh, the fixed and the variable portion here. But in our uh, uh, variable costing, we only have the variable overhead. So our total manufacturing costs are going to be based only include the total variable manufacturing costs. Then they're again going to work go into our work and process and flow on through here. In this case, we're just using those total variable manufacturing costs. So work and process, just beginning work and process plus our total variable manufacturing costs minus any ending work and process. That'll give us again the variable cost of goods manufactured. And that'll flow into our finished goods and we just take our beginning finished goods less that total variable cost of goods manufactured, subtract from it the ending finished goods and that's going to give you the variable cost of goods sold here. That's going to go in to our cost of goods sold here as an expense in the period. Okay, so the only thing, only difference here between our absorption costing that we have here is that their fixed costs here, all those fixed costs are being capitalized in our inventory here and they're going to end up in the cost of goods sold here whereas uh, with our variable costing here the fixed costs are going to be expense they're not going to end up in our cost of goods sold here in, in our inventory or cost of goods sold they're going to be expensed or expensed at the period okay so what does all this mean here okay so let's look at it in these terms and we're going to look at three different situations here comparing our direct or variable costing versus our absorption costing i use these words interchangeably here direct or variable costing okay so let's look at the first case here where the number of units sold is going to equal the number of units produced and normally in this case your net income here that this is we're going to be looking at our net income here uh, absorption costing and variable costing should really have about the same net income, approximately the same net income here. Now, if we look at the next case here, say the number of units that we sold a sell here are less than the number of units that we produced, then the net income here for absorption costing is going to be greater than variable costing here. And really the reason for that is you have to go and you have to understand what's sitting in the inventories here and look at your inventory. So in this case, our inventories are going to increase here because units sold is less than units produced. So for absorption costing, that fixed manufacturing costs are deferred in the inventory. They're sitting in the inventory here while all the fixed manufacturing costs are expensed under direct costing. Okay, so you can understand that. Uh, net income here under absorption costing should be greater because we haven't recognized all those inventory or that fixed inventory cost here yet until those items get sold here they're sitting in inventory whereas with variable costing here that fixed cost has been expensed now it's just the opposite here if you look at your units sold we're going to be greater than the units produced then your net income here uh, for absorption costing should be less than variable costing. And the reason is just the opposite here. So if you're, this is the case where your in inventories decrease. So some of those prior period fixed manufacturing costs here are expense. You've sold more inventory here than you produced. So you've had fixed manufacturing costs sitting in that inventory here that you sold. So under absorption costing, along with the current period's fixed manufacturing cost, 
you're going to be recognizing some of that previous manufacturing or that uh, fixed manufacturing costs sitting in those inventories. So you really should have in this case, your net income here for absorption costing should be less than the variable costing, only because under absorption costing, along with the current period's fixed manufacturing cost, you will be recognizing some of those fixed manufacturing costs because you're selling that inventory. And that inventory is going into the cost of goods sold, and that's going to be decreasing your net income the inventory that's being sold. So you not only have the prior period, some of what's sitting in the prior period's uh, manufac fixed manufacturing cost, you also have along with it, the current period's fixed manufacturing cost. Okay, so that's really the three different situations that you'll be looking at here. When you're really looking at the difference between your direct and your ver direct variable here versus absorption costing. Okay, now let's look at our income statement format. And we'll look at our absorption costing here versus our variable costing. In each of them, we have to go through different steps here to come up with the net income here before tax. So if looking at the difference between absorption costing here and variable costing, what we have to do is for absorption costing, we're going to come up with some gross profit calculation here. Now, for variable costing, instead of gross profit, we're going to have a manufacturing margin and a contribution margin. So let's just look at our absorption costing here. So looking first at a direct material used, and we'll just use, go through our equation here. We can have some beginning materials here for the period, and then we'd add to it any purchased material that we have made for the period, and then we'd have to subtract out any ending uh, materials that we have on hand. So that's going to difference here. Uh, that is going to give us a direct material used here. So then we take that direct material used, we can determine our manufacturing cost. We add the direct material used plus our direct labor plus our factory overhead. That's going to equal our total manufacturing costs here. Then our cost of goods sold, just take your total manufacturing costs here, add to it your beginning work and process, subtract out your ending work and process, that's going to be, give you your cost of goods manufactured. So now, you, well, that was the cost of goods manufactured that we had calculated. Now for our cost of goods sold. Take your cost of goods manufactured, add to it your beginning uh, finished goods, add your ending finished goods. That's going to give you your cost of goods sold. So here's your gross profit. You take the, your sales dollars here, you subtract from it your cost of goods sold. That gives you your gross profit. Then you have the income before tax is simply your gross profit less the selling and administrative expenses, all those expenses. That's going to give you your net income here before taxes. Okay, so we could go through the same thing here for variable costing. The only difference is uh, direct materials here would be the same here. Direct materials used, same as we'd have for our uh, absorption costing up above. The manufacturing cost, that would be a little different here because you, you would. What we would do here, we'd take the direct materials used, add to it your direct labor, but here, instead of, you would add the variable factory overhead here, instead of the total factory overhead, and that's going to give your total variable manufacturing cost. Then you, your cost of goods sold for manufacturing, just took those total variable manufacturing costs, add to it the beginning work and process, subtract your ending work and process. Here you're going to get your variable cost of goods manufactured. Okay, so cost of goods sold is just take those variable goods of cost, cost of goods manufactured, add your beginning finished goods, subtract your ending finished goods. That gives you your variable cost of goods sold here. Okay, so now we get down to our manufacturing margin. Again, this is just taking the sales dollars and we would subtract from it the variable cost of goods sold here. That's going to equal your contribution margin. So take your contribution margin, subtract your variable selling and administrative expenses. That gives you, that equals your contribution margin. So now we get down to our income before taxes here. That would be the contribution margin less the fixed factory overhead, less our fixed selling and administrative expenses. That equals our net income before taxes. Okay, so we went through both of our income statements here, looking at our absorption costing versus variable costing. So again, the only real difference is, well, except that uh, variable costing here, we only have our variable cost, but it's how we got down to, after our cost of goods sold here. For absorption costing, we came up with that gross profit calculation here. Whereas with variable costing, we had that manufacturing margin and our contribution margin that we had to calculate. Okay, so that's our income statement format.
And then one last thing here. We talked about those, that input measurement, those alternative in inventory costing inputs here. And this is where you're gonna, we have these manufacturing costs here. We got our variable direct, variable overhead, fixed direct, and fixed overhead here. So we have these three different methods here. We have our actual costing, normal costing, and standard costing. Just to go through them quick here. Standard cost, all you're doing is taking some standard price or standard rate for those your manufacturing costs here is times some standard quantity allowed that you have established based on your standards. That's what you do for standard costing. Actual costing, you're just gonna take your actual uh, rate or price here for your manufacturing cost times the actual quantity used. And then for normal costing, it's a little bit different here. You're gonna, for your variable direct, you're gonna take your actual price here times actual quantity used. Very same, same thing as actual costing here. But when we get down to our variable overhead here, normal costing, you're gonna take some budgeted rate here for your variable overhead. Uh, times some actual quantity. Actual costing, you did the actual rate. Normal costing, budgeted rate. So that's the only difference between actual and normal costing here. And then the fixed direct cost here would be the same here. Uh, actual price times the actual quantity used. And then for the fixed overhead here, that's the other difference here, is that for normal costing, you use some budgeted rate here times the actual quantity used versus actual costing, you did the actual rate. So what would this all mean here? With variable costing that we looked at, you're gonna be using the variable direct costs here, that's for material and labor here, and then you're gonna have the variable overhead here. But with absorption costing, you're gonna have included your variable direct and your variable overhead here, plus your direct, fixed direct cost here, and your fixed overhead cost here. But that has all to do with your in, the inputs going into your inventory here. This is this is really what's going going into your inventory. The calculations we made here. Variable costing. All you're going to have the variable direct and your variable overhead. Absorption costing. You add in those fixed direct and also your fixed overhead here. And we could go down to our little diagram one more time here. Okay. So what we just to review what we've done here uh, for our variable uh, costing here our direct material, your direct labor, our factory overhead, the variable portion here, went into our inventory account and got capitalized. And the other our difference here, for the other uh, factory overhead, the fixed portion in any selling and administrative expenses, both the variable and fixed, uh, for variable costing were expensed when they were incurred. Now, absorption costing, the only difference is this factory overhead, the fixed portion where variable costing, it got expensed. Now, for the, with absorption costing, that factory overhead, the fixed portion got capitalized here in the inventory. Other than that, this in for absorption costing, you're selling an administrative variable and fixed portion got expensed when they were incurred. Okay, so that's the summary here in the difference between absorption costing versus variable costing.